Hello. So this video, we are going to be tackling uh, roots and in particular sort of even roots from that perspective of inverting functions. So the end goal here is to sort of answer that question of like, when do we use that plus minus sort of situation or the symbol or, you know, when does that crop up? And sort of importantly, when does it not crop up, right? All right. So when we sort of want to look at radicals as inverse functions, right, it sort of helps to remember where these things come from. So in essence, if we're talking about sort of any root, but, you know, as an example, as a square root, right, square roots, they sort of come up in this natural sort of format trying to invert things, right? So for the square root, we want to sort of figure out the solutions to this x squared equals c for some constant c. So as an example, we might want to solve something like x squared equals 4, right? So sort of before the square root was really a, a thing that was sort of notated and, and talked about explicitly, right, we would sort of just figure out what these were somehow. And the nature of that somehow bit has some fascinating history that we're not going to dive in, so don't worry. But eventually we needed some way of notating this, and that's when that sort of square root function thing was born. But immediately, we sort of run into some trouble with the square root function. So the problem is, is that if we're trying to answer, right, something squared equals 4, well, obviously, sort of, we have two plausible answers here. We have 2, but we also have negative 2, right? Because if we square negative 2, we also get positive 4. Now, that might not seem like a problem, but remember, we want a square root function, right? And functions only have a single output. So... On the one hand, we want some function thing that gives us the answer, but we're sort of immediately in trouble because there's more than one answer. So we can't have a function that gives us all the answers or our function can't give us all the answers, right? So there's sort of a, a problem, a choice of some sort. So, well, the way we address that is that we sort of pick a default answer, right? So, so the thing here is that it turns out that if we want to have sort of uh, one or the other in terms of like the two or negative two, right? It turns out positive stuff usually easier to deal with. So we sort of just by convention decide that we're always going to have the positive stuff as the output. There's fancy terminology for this that you probably won't run into unless you take sort of upper level math classes. Uh, this is something called a primary branch of the squared root function. Don't need to know that, but just know that sort of this is sort of a, a choice that we make. There's no sort of reason it has to be one thing or the other. But again, this is sort of an important thing to note that we're making this choice because if we're looking at the original, right, the x squared equals 4, we have both 2 and uh, positive and negative 2 as answers. But the solution to x equaling square root of 4, that's only 2. So again, to be sort of absolutely crystal clear, x squared equals 4 has two solutions, but x equaling the square root of 4 only has one solution. So these things are sort of, in some sense, fundamentally different statements, okay? Now, the reason for this is that on the one hand, right, if we sort of relax the requirement that the square root only has one output, right, we allow it to say, okay, it can have a positive and a negative answer, right? So the square root of 4 is positive 2 and negative 2. Well, if we do that, we no longer have functions, which means all the stuff we talk about that works with functions doesn't work anymore, which is all kinds of bad, right? Like this is that would be a big problem. Lots of stuff that we sort of take for granted would suddenly start like breaking down and, and the square root thing would be sort of all kinds of a mess. On the flip side, though, right, on the other hand, if we only use the positive result, if we sort of use that convention and we only have the one output for the square root, that means that when we use the square root to get our list of valid answers, we lose half of them, right? We don't have the negatives anymore. So we're sort of losing half of the actual answers to the original question, which is also bad. Right. So like, how do we deal with that? How do we sort of reconcile this issue where like on the one hand, we kind of need it to only have one output. But on the other hand, if it only has one output, we're losing a bunch of information. So the difference here is sort of how the square root comes to be. So if you're looking at a thing like x squared equals four, right, this is the thing that has two answers as opposed to something like the square root of four, which only has the one answer. 
So the idea here is that if you are the one to introduce the square root, right, if you're the one who writes down the square root like here, right, like if I start at this 4 equals x squared, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to square root both sides to get rid of that square, and so the left side is then square root of 4. If you introduce the square root, that means that you should add the plus or minus 2 because prior to you sort of writing down the square root part, there were two answers, and then once you've written that square root, it's sort of you have to like, you know, push it down to one answer, positive answer like two. But that's artificial. That's just because we really want it to be a function. So the plus or minus thing is a way of sort of addressing this sort of push-pull situation where you're like, on the one hand, we want a function. On the other hand, it's not giving us all the answers, okay? So rule of thumb, if you're the one to introduce the square root, during the solution process as opposed to someone handing it to you, right, as like the statement of the problem. If you introduce the square root, that's when you want the plus or minus, okay? Whereas if you are sort of just given the square root, right, if I say, okay, what is the square root of four? That's always going to be, for the, our sake, the positive one, right? So the square root of four, always two, but if you introduce the square root, like you have x squared equals four and you square root both sides, then you get plus or minus two, okay? So if you're given a square root, or again, to be clear, we're using that as an example. This, all of this stuff is true for all even root values. So if you're given the root and it's an even root, then only a positive output, right? So if you introduce it, plus or minus, if it's given to you, only positive stuff, okay? And sort of last but not least, it's worth mentioning that this is not an absolute rule. This is sort of how it works almost all the time. But of course, as with most things, there's sort of some deep magic going on in the background here. So there's uh, certain situations where that may not apply, but most of the time that has to do with things like the domain and what might be happening in the background. And that's something that would be sort of brought up in the context of whatever you're looking at. Like if you're taking an engineering course or something and, and it becomes important, they'll sort of cover that bit then, okay? All right, so what did we talk about? Well, we talked about even roots, right? Using square root as sort of the proto example. Uh, we talked about even roots in general and how if you sort of are the one to introduce an even root, like a square root, then you have to include that plus or minus because there's sort of both of those answers, but we want it to be a function, so we only sort of let it be the positive version. So you have to use the plus or minus to sort of offset that, to recognize that before you brought in the root, it had more than one answer. Likewise, Again, because we want it to be a function, if it's handed to you, if I just ask you what the square root of 16 is, it's only the positive number, right? The, in that case, 4, for example. Okay? So that is that.